feel uh, I I uh, I feel like coming back home. You know, uh, in the U.S., I have been living in uh, um, several states and several uh, places, uh, being affiliated or working in several institutes. Uh, but now I felt really last night. I felt like oh, I am home, and you know, seeing my uh, teachers, undergrad teachers, uh, it felt. Uh, home uh, being back home and I felt the warmth that I felt when I was here and also I know that these people know how little physics I know so it was a <laughs> mixed feeling right it, oh these well, they I was here when I had no knowledge of physics and they were teaching me and it is a great feeling um, I received a lot from uh, Fifth and the city Initially, uh, you know, I was a good student in high school and such, and I had a, some doubt that Pitt is a good place for me. So <clears throat> I came as a refugee. My aunt was living in this city, so I end up in this place. I had no money to go anywhere else, no, practically no money to travel, even to explore. And I, I had to start something. So um, after one semester in community college, I got admitted here. But I always had this feeling that, oh, I could do much better. You know, I had kind of looking down. I was arrogant and very young. Uh, and But then uh, gradually I start to appreciate what the place has to offer, you know. So what do you need as an undergrad? You need a place that uh, you the courses are taught by people who care about you. Mm -hmm. And you need some research environment, so you start learning how to do research, or at least I didn't know how, and I needed that environment. So the classes and the teachers uh, were really did what they were supposed to do, and I was double majoring in physics and mathematics, so I get connected to many people. The flexibility of the program was such that, that I could pick up courses that I didn't know, so if something was trivial or simple for me, I could just talk to um, advisors and get by and not ha take that course and waste my time. And then I worked in a lab for uh, three years straight and that was an amazing experience because I was someone who didn't know how to do anything and someone gave me the benefit of the doubt and then um, working with um, uh, uh, Walter Goldberg uh, and Shalon Wu at that time they were working uh, uh, closely together, I just heard that Walter is uh, now really retiring uh, after many years of being emeritus. And uh, they gave me uh, what I needed, and I um, wrote uh, two papers with them. Uh, so I was very panicked about the whole uh, future and dreams and everything I had when I came here. But uh, the, the, the environment helped me to calm down and, and s gradually see what I can do in the future. I think um, just being a very confused person on what is physics is, what is, oh, yeah, I have my thinking of what it is, how to do experiments and how to be in the lab. Mm -hmm. But then Shalom and the whole department helped me to good. form it, you know, to, to something more meaningful and practical. I think that the vision that formed in here uh, in my head of uh, what what does it take you know I mean I'm not maybe I never became a good experimentalist but at least I saw good ones in here say so, oh that's how they are uh, and that was very um, that was very uh, valuable to me uh, I think it would be less admi I never had the uh, chance to be a professor somewhere but I think it has less administrative uh, thing, uh, way less administrative, but uh, um, some days it just all goes to administrative tasks. Um, well, uh, we have the unique uh, chance to as a being a researcher or engineer. I think the name you mentioned at, in the beginning is quite flexible. It really, uh, uh, at some point, I they gave me a title and I was like, oh, I don't like this name or title. What is this job? They said, oh, you can change it to anything you like. So it's not about name and creating a hierarchy. It's really about getting the job done and try, uh, and, and, and uh, focusing on the actual work. So, um, so this good, good, good thing about Google is that um, I'm part of a very professional team. So if I get stuck, I can go and ask questions from people who are very experienced and have been in this uh, 
and the whole team is really <coughs> experienced as far as the state of the art knowledge and um, information. And also, uh, I have the chance to work in the lab myself. You know, mm -hmm. sometimes we have to balance with the incoming uh, members of the team, and uh, still we have certain grad students that I have to help with those their tasks and their project, and just be sitting there and listen to their data and whatnot and figure out the future directions and what um, so help. you do have your own grad students as well? Well, when we moved to Google in 2014, my um, postdoctoral advisor, who became my Google manager now, had, uh, I don't know, maybe 10 or more grad students. Mm -hmm. Some of them graduated and left. Some of them graduated and joined Google. Some of them are still grad students. Mm -hmm. And I'm involved in helping them um, not as an official advisor, but just uh, you know, helping unofficially, unofficially helping uh, be sure. I mean, but everybody is helping get someone in the lab, more junior, senior members helping the junior members. So sometimes goes to that kind of things, uh, um, but some time goes to actually doing the experiment. You know, being in touching the system, and uh, uh, well, for now we are working on expanding the system. So lots of energy goes into. Um, purchasing and um, bringing um, parts and uh, making threads and wiring the threads and getting the electronics and fabrication going. So um, I would say it's a very healthy balance in a sense that you know you have the chance to work in the lab and, and not just uh, report and apply for fundings and so. So in that sense, it's a very, uh, uh, very um, uh, good environment. And But on the other hand, we are given the freedom to present and communicate with the um, theorists and other people and collaborate uh, after we have done our work of um, patents, writing our patents and whatnot, and um, securing our publication and um, that kind of a standard industrial settings. But then we can um, openly talk uh, about the works, of course, to a certain level, not all the details, but. Uh, in that sense, we are not closed institute, and that's that's very valuable to us. Uh, actually, uh, <laughs> the one person uh, that works very close to me, we kind of drafted something together, and I keep asking him to actually pu publish that on archive. You know, the problems that we want to s get help from uh, mm -hmm. um, experimental or theoretical community. We kind of have that list, and we want to publish it. You know. It's, because one basic uh, fundamental belief we have at Google is that uh, getting a quantum computer and making a quantum computer or advancing quantum technologies to the level that we can make a quantum computer is a very hard task. And we need collaboration across many uh, disciplines and many people. The, the closed door policy of like let's lock ourselves up and then we do it ourselves, I think is very uh, hard, is not going to get anywhere. Um, so that's the, the, the fundamental reason behind our collaboration. Um, in particularly in my case, I think uh, what we are trying to do is to make a bigger chip which has more qubits in it, mm -hmm. and then be sure that the coherence, meaning the quantumness, the quantum features are preserved, and not getting to um, limits that quantum mechanics is not up because we want to exploit the quantumness, and if your quantumness is gone by decoherence, by connecting to environment, by uh, noise, by other um, defects, then uh, we are not uh, doing what theorists wants us to do to implement the algorithm. Implementing an algorithm is quite meaningless at that time. Um, that's one challenge, how to make it bigger and preserve quantumness. But then when you make something big, how you are controlling it? A, a, uh, you have to think about these as a, uh, uh, puppets and a puppet master who has to control all these at the same time and is very exponentially sensitive in your motion of your pulses and synchronization of the pulses, size of the pulses, distortion of the pulses. So how do you do that? Uh, that's a big challenge. Uh, and if we could achieve both of these, then we are golden. Then we can do a computation that no one can do. I do remember very vividly the moments we uh, we uh, worked with Shalon and many hours and uh, the, the, the wherever we found the 
or we found how to interpret the Strahol, uh, Reynolds, uh, forgot even their names, the, the, yeah, the relation of frequency versus the uh, frequency versus the Reynolds number relation. Uh, I do remember those moments, um, but also um, um, I, I do remember the moments that I received the scholarship or fellowship at this very, or the paper got accepted. It, uh, 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 now my heartbeat goes up every time I have a paper in review uh, in a big journal. So I do remember all those moments uh, very vividly. Um, yes, they're, they're, yeah, it, it's hard to describe the, the, the moments that you discover something or your data really does. Uh, I can tell that it just uh, is a bit overwhelming that you cannot sit quiet and you have to, you, ju you just can't sit. You just uh, start walking or running or kicking something. Uh, in one <laughs> case, that's what I did. Uh, uh, so I, yeah. Like uh, you did something, yeah. you got excited, or it was the other way? Both, uh, both, both ways. Both. At some point, I broke my, my uh, toe uh, because you, this. You broke it? Yeah, <laughs> and my lab mates uh, thought I'm crazy. Or the doctor was trying to send me to some counseling. And I'm like, dude, this standard research. Uh, what, what did you find at that time? Oh, some ex I set up for an experiment, for a, which was very long, mm -hmm. and the software reset. It was like 24 hours data, and in the middle of it, data got reset. So I got so angry that I kicked some chair and I broke my toe. And then it became a story that people use against me. <laughs> but, uh, but there was good moments, too. I uh, ended up in kicking softer objects, so it didn't. <laughs> but also, I do remember the moments of rejection. And again, you just get uh, shut down. Uh, and it's very intense moment that uh, why they're rejecting. Sometimes it's political rejection. You know, They just don't like uh, somehow something about uh, yeah. uh, But then sometimes it's decent physics rejection. And it makes you think that what you have done, was that a good choice? What did you do? And I think uh, a good physicist, uh, a good life experience would be to make something out of those moments. I do remember those moments too that, you know, I had to go for a walk for hours to get back to normal. It's such a, I don't know, um, surge of blood to your brain or something. You just shut down. But but uh, a bad person, a, wrong, a, a, a bad approach would be to blame people saying, oh, they don't appreciate us, um, blame it on animosity. Yeah. But a good approach would be say, well, maybe I did something wrong. And uh, maybe I'm not doing the best or I'm not doing it properly. And uh, I think uh, it's worth focusing on both. Yeah. yeah. I'm planning to control the states of the qubits in a large system. Okay. Yeah. And that's <laughs> that's going to fill up my uh, very much um, life and day and night, yeah. Um, and I think um, if we could control a state of these qubits uh, uh, over larger systems, uh, maybe a few ten or maybe a few hundred, we would be in a very good shape. And as I said, you know, 2000, I, mean, I didn't say yet. 2012 or 13, we have three qubits. And then we got nine, and uh, now we are making a slightly bigger chip. And um, it's not hard to imagine in the next few years, you would have a few 10 or few 100. And uh, if I could demonstrate a good control over it, I would be very happy. And if it's really, really well done, then I get to figure out what to do next. But I think uh, becoming a master of that would be a very, I don't want to think beyond that. It's just uh, that's very, very fulfilling at the moment to think about it. You see, quantum mechanics started in the early part of the last century. Mm -hmm. And it brought with it consequences that people like Einstein could never make peace with. It turned out Einstein was wrong. Um, when it comes to the EPR paradox, he really formulated his criticism of quantum mechanics and EPR, and he debated with Bohr for many years. 
these philosophical uh, consequences that, that, that quantum mechanic brought uh, really perplexed us for many years. Mm -hmm. And uh, still, I don't think the problems are solved or, or they are really lively and heatedly debated. And I think it should be. <coughs> the entanglement, superposition, um, the probabilistic versus deterministic, these are very interesting problems. And uh, with the work of uh, John Bell, it came uh, from the land of epistemology to uh, experimental physics. This is beautiful. But then there is another um, thing uh, started, another uh, way that, look, um, you know, they call it shut up and calculate. Um, it, it is a school of thought, meaning that, look, these are there. These questions, these, compli these philosophical conundrums are there. Um, but we can use quantum mechanics. The last century was about birth of quantum mechanics uh, and, and then getting um, thinking about the philosophical and then um, our, our, um, what does it mean. Mm -hmm. This century, I think those, that research and that, that, that question and that discussion is alive and should be. But this century is the century of engineering quantum platforms. Uh, and we're trying to exploit and use quantum mechanics. As Feynman said, you know, nature is quantum, uh, so we can use it. Uh, and, and it's interesting, in the early 1980s, he said, um, this is an interesting problem to, to simulate quantum system with quantum systems because it's very, um, because it's hard. He knew it at that time, it's a hard problem. So I think, uh, um, this is a really flourishing and expanding field of quantum engineering and making advancing quantum technologies. And I feel like this century would be very much focused on this. As you can see, now we are moving away from, not moving away, moving out from academic settings because the work is getting bigger and it's becoming more demanding financially and uh, in terms of uh, resources. So um, some Aspects of it can be done in university settings, but big companies, uh, Google, IBM, Intel, Microsoft, um, and other uh, startups uh, are looking into this and uh, becoming very uh, huge industry, uh, rightfully so. And I feel like uh, if uh, people are not certain what to do with their undergrad and what uh, they're deciding, I feel like this century is the century of engineering quantum platforms. Sure, thank you. Thank you. It was a pleasure to have you here at PGI. Thank you, my pleasure.